Hello everyone, and welcome back to Thoughts on the Cosmos. In the last episode, we took a look at how spiral galaxies got their unique shapes and the important role that the spirals played in the formation of new stars. But spiral galaxies aren't the only show in town. They aren't the only type of galaxy out there. The universe is filled with galaxies of different shapes and sizes, all of them having uniquely different distribution of stars when seen at the end of a telescope. The universe is an ocean of galaxies, and from what we've discovered so far by delving into that great ocean, it appears that no two galaxies are alike. Studying other galaxies gives us a better idea of the place of the Milky Way in the universe, and the universe is a pretty big place. But until the 1920s, a mere 100 years ago, a very short time when compared to the total amount of time that humans have been looking up to the stars, our ocean of galaxies was thought to be nothing more than a little pond limited to just one galaxy. Just one. Ours. That's impossible! I know, right? It's just one of those days. But it wasn't because of the universe actually having gotten bigger or expanding since then. That's a topic better reserved for a later video. The entire universe was thought to be only a single galaxy because of our limited understanding of the distances between stars and other objects in space. Until the early 20th century, the 1900s, the entire universe was thought to consist of only the Milky Way with a modest size of 100,000 light years across, as I have mentioned in previous videos. Everything beyond that might as well have been filled with Cthulhu-like space aliens like we saw drawn on early maps of the world. Back then, no one really knew what was out there. This was because of the equipment and techniques we used to measure the distances in outer space were still limited. We were still mostly using reflecting telescopes, a design that went back all the way to Newton 200 years before. We didn't have any of the fancy pants radio telescopes and adaptive optics of today. And don't even think of space-based telescopes. This was the 1920s, everyone was still partying at Gatsby's. We had made a lot of progress by that time. And although astronomy is the oldest of all natural sciences, stretching back to the time of the Mesopotamians and the ancient Chinese, the idea of modern astronomy is only about a few hundred years old, dating back to the invention of the telescope around the time of the Renaissance. We had discovered that the sun was not at the center of the galaxy, and we had known the idea of something like a galaxy could exist since the time of the ancient Greeks. But whether our galaxy existed as a one-off, forever alone thing in the universe remained an important question of great debates and astronomical investigation. One of the greatest of those debates was called the Shapley-Curtis debate that took place in the 1920s concerning the size of the universe. The argument between American astronomers Harlow Shapley and Heber Curtis happened because of the discovery of mysterious fuzzy patches of light called nebulae, seen through telescopes and astronomical photographs. Nebulae is Latin for cloud. Oops, I mean cloud. Remember those huge clouds of gas and dust that existed between stars? We talked about them in the last episode, the ones that would eventually form stars and people. Some of the nebulae seen through the telescopes was mostly just gas and dust in outer space. With today's technology, we see them as those colorful space pictures you look at when you're stoned. But back then, they were a big mystery. Harlow Shapley thought that one of these nebulae, called the Andromeda Nebulae, was part of the Milky Way. From observations made at the time, the Andromeda Nebulae appeared to be 100 million light years away. That's one followed by eight zeros. A big difference from the 100,000 light years originally believed to be the size of the single galaxy universe. The universe was apparently 1,000 times bigger than anyone had ever imagined up until that time. For most of the astronomers attending the great debate, that idea seemed unacceptable. To them, it seemed just utterly mind-bogglingly crazy. Don't get me wrong, Harlow Shapley was pretty badass. He was the guy that discovered that the sun was not the center of the galaxy, and that's pretty impressive. Contending him was another astronomer named Heber Curtis, who proposed that the Andromeda Nebulae was actually another galaxy, 
another island universe of stars. And if this Andromeda galaxy was an island universe in its own right, who's to say that there weren't other island universes populating the great depths of outer space? This was an equally insane idea for the time, so one of these insane ideas had to be true. It wasn't until later, through the work of another legendary astronomer by the name of Edwin Hubble, that we discovered which one was correct. Shapley's universe of a single galaxy was replaced by one of many islands of stars in an even larger universe. How he did it, I will explain in the next episode. One thing that I take from this story is that our current picture of the universe took a lot of time and effort to build, and it's still in the process of being built. Today, we think of the existence of other galaxies as simple fact set in stone. And although we can't travel to those galaxies right now, and I do look forward to the day in which we can, we do have pictures that you can look up on your smartphone when you're bored. But the quest to find that picture took a lot of arguments, difficult questions, and even some bruised egos in between. Wherever the process of discovery may take us, the next great picture might be waiting just over the horizon. Curious about cosmology? My channel wants to fill you in. Not in the porno way. My name is Son of Terror 92 and this is my series called Thoughts on the Cosmos. If you've ever wanted to learn more about space and the universe that we live in, like, comment and subscribe to keep the channel going and I will see you next time.